Hey everybody on Heartbreakers. Today I'm going to be answering some friendship deal breakers. Obviously I'm going to put my personal input on this because you know I have you know a bad history of friends so I hope this is really helpful for you guys so listen up and these are questions that you guys have asked on social media which is very helpful so next run with questions I really want you guys to really think of stuff that you've been wanting to ask and I'll post it you guys can click right there and ask your questions all right what are some deal breakers some say disrespecting service staff big one i feel like that is the number one thing i will not be around people if they are disrespectful to any type of service people whatsoever i think that is disgusting behavior i don't want to be around that i also feel like people who purposely complain at restaurants about their dishes 24 7 like have you ever gone out with someone and they're always complaining they're never happy deal breaker for me i will not be their friend it's a turn off Nobody wants to be around a negative Nancy. When your best friend hides something from you, regardless of what it is. Hmm. I feel like if some, if one of my friends hides something from me and it's about me, that's a deal breaker. But if someone doesn't want to tell me what's going on in their life, that's up to them to expose that to me. I don't want anybody telling me things that they don't want me to know. And some people are more private than others. Some people find embarrassment in things that maybe not be embarrassing for you. Unless it's about me, I don't feel like that's really a deal breaker. It's also some people are too nosy. You don't need to know everything that's going on in your friend's life. I feel like this day and age, we're a little bit, we invade people's privacy too much and we got to stop doing that. I think that comes from social media. Jealous of a new romantic relationship. Cut it off. Don't even have a conversation with the person. Your friend should never be jealous of anything that is good for you that is not a friend not someone that you want around. I know that I've had friends that have been very jealous and they become very destructive. And I feel like jealous people are looking to steal an opportunity from you and you want to keep that away from them. Someone that is jealous potentially could want to steal that person from you and you don't want that. And you don't want to deal with it. When you're in a fresh relationship, you want it to be all like happy, like you know, you want your friends to be cheering you on and being there for maybe when the relationship possibly could end. You want that person there. You don't want it to become a dark energy source from you, from your friends being jealous. Does it? You don't want that. Cut that person off. It's not even worth having a conversation. They won't hear it. Jealous people can't hear. <laughs> jealous people can't hear. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sleeping with your ex or your current partner guys, come on. That is a deal breaker. You guys know how it is for me. I've had a lot of friends try to sleep with my partners while I'm with them. I've also had a lot of friends sleep with my exes. You don't want somebody in your circle that wants somebody that you've had. And especially if it's an ex, that means that they probably most likely did something to you that you don't agree with. And just like how you don't want a friend who's a friend of someone that's done something terrible to you, it really shows who they are. I've had a lot of friends sleep with my exes. I just don't like that. Like if I even feel like I like someone or I'm saying I'm going on a date with someone and maybe I haven't even been intimate with that person, I feel like that person is off the table for my friends. I don't care. You cannot touch that person. You cannot reach out to that person. That is like a different level of dishonesty and that's on your partner too. It's one thing if it's a threesome and you guys are all having a conversation and like drinks are flowing and like it's it's a mutual agreement fine. I've done that plenty of times. It's been great experiences. I don't see my friends any differently by doing that, but I would never accept a friend then reaching out to my partner and going behind my back. You got to cut that person off. Holding an emotional space for them when they won't do that for you. Yeah, one-sided friendships are not good. They're hard to cut off also. They're exhausting. Your friends are there for you because you need them to be there emotionally and that's what friends are for and it can't be one-sided it's got to be like if they come to you and they can't even ask you how you're doing or they can't even hear what you're going through that is someone that is very selfish and honestly potentially narcissistic 
I've definitely had that. I've definitely this year really cleaned up my friend groups that have been like that towards me because you need that safety net. You need that support system from people. You can't keep that around you at all. It's sad. They got to learn. They got to learn that they can't be like that. And the only way they can is by losing friends. Okay. Believing in conspiracy theories, I stopped talking to one of my friends because he believed in weird shit after the lockdowns. Yeah, I try to really stay away from conspiracy theories and also like politics with friends. I feel like some people think that that's important. For me, it's not. I also try to like not force my religious views on people. Like those are the two things where it's like conspiracy or three things, conspiracy theories, religious and politic views. I was always taught growing up that like conspiracy theories and stuff like that is like almost like a private thing. But I understand that it can get very annoying, especially during the pandemic, because there were so many conspiracy theories that people really thought that they needed to voice their opinion. Opinion and people just don't have the same opinions. They don't want to hear it. You can't convince them. They'll find any type of evidence or facts to back it up. It's just not worth fighting over. Okay, this is a good one. This is actually a really good question, guys, because I feel like this happens a lot to people more than you think. If you had the opportunity to meet someone that you thought you could only meet in your dreams and you had the chance to meet them in real life, how would you stay calm and not be nervous? Okay, guys, my favorite thing to do, and my therapist taught me this, is if you breathe in and you hold your breath, so say you breathe in for eight seconds and you'll exhale 16, it really calms down your nervous system. Like it really, really does. You can even, like, this is some like EMDR shit and like therapy stuff, but like if you're by yourself, like tapping yourself like this and even tapping yourself on your face actually really calms you down and distracts you. And I love to do that in any situation that I'm nervous. When I'm going up to a guy, I just breathe in, hold my breath for eight seconds, exhale for 16, and it really calms me down. And I also try to tell myself, I know this person is like my dream person, my ideal person, but if I really want them, I got to calm myself down and people can sense nervousness and you got to just take a second to yourself before you go up to them don't rush up to them if you're feeling nervous go to the bathroom calm yourself down get some fresh air breathe in and out slowly calm yourself down convince yourself that you're confident not convince yourself tell yourself you're confident enough to go up to this person and meet them and talk to them because this is your ideal person you don't want to miss your opportunity don't put that pressure on yourself it's not worth it All right, heartbreakers, thanks for listening. See you guys next time.